My experience with teaching out of the box started many years ago when I was asked to teach in Taiwan for an undergraduate program here at Stony Brook. <clears throat> the program, <clears throat> my role was to, <clears throat> this was a life-changing experience for me, to hit curveballs <clears throat> for second language learners. I was given the book and the plane ticket and told I'd be met a professor when I get to Taiwan. As I was leaving, I said, thank you so much for the opportunity, but I asked one question. Do the students speak English? And I was given an answer, sure, a little. I was definitely nervous. I was a young man going on a journey, and I saw this as a new opportunity. I knew very little about Taiwan or what I was going to do, but I wanted to take the challenge on. It was a long 18-hour flight. I was half awake, half asleep when I finally arrived at Taiwan. I got through customs, and when I got there, it was close to midnight. I walked outside, and there were students hanging up signs, welcome, Professor Ecker. Thank you for coming. I was in shock. What was this? What was this culture? They were welcoming me at midnight, their time. It was fantastic. The professor was there and took me in his own car to the hotel. Each night, I was teaching from 7 to 10 at night. To, to give you an idea of an American in Taipei, when you walk around, you can't read the street signs. You can't read the store signs. You can't even read the menus. I tried to go into a McDonald's and order. Let me tell you, it was difficult. Each day, I was met by a student. She said she would tour me around Taipei, take, take, take me the train and the bus to get there, and then she would make sure I knew where I was going each day. Her name was Tiffany. She had some broken English, but she really tried to, to put herself out. I was in awe. A student really helping me, to helping the professor? That's not usual. That first night, I decided to do something different as my activity. I had them introduce the person sitting next to them to everybody else in the class. As I asked them to do that, I went to the bathroom. On the way to the bathroom, I noticed a professor using an overhead slide projector and reading what was on the slide to their students. As I passed another classroom, a professor had a stack of overhead slides this high and was going through three or four slides a minute. I was like, okay, this is different. When I returned to class, I had them introduce each other. And then I worked through that first night to class. They were shy and quiet, but they seemed to get the material. But I seemed to not make that connection. On the way home, I asked Tiffany, how'd it go? She was very polite, but in her broken English, when she said good, I realized I hadn't made the connection. I hadn't gone through, hadn't showed them how the American style of teaching was any different than their Taiwan professors just reading their overheads and having them memorize the material back. I got to the hotel at midnight. I was devastated. I flew all the way around the world and I couldn't show them that this style of teaching was better, that this program was better for them. I was thrown that curveball I never expected. I was the batter standing at the plate and thrown that curveball I never expected. I knew it was in my power to hit the ball out of the park the next night or fail miserably. I stayed up all night and reworked the lectures. The second night, I decided I'd do more listening than talking. So when I went to class, I showed some slide and then asked them, what do you think? Now, they're very used to being polite and quiet, so they're expecting their professor to answer their own question. I found a chair and sat down and just sat there and looked at them and decided to wait and wait and wait. What seemed like an eternity was only a few minutes. Finally, one girl, Judy, raised her hand and answered a question. I can't even remember what she said, but I said, great job. Thank you, Judy. That's fantastic. She had this big f smile on her face. And so did the, the rest of the students. They were in shock. I encouraged them to talk. Whenever they could, I had them clap for each other whenever they spoke. I had bought pens from Stony Brook. I handed them out as a reward. They were all excited. They were like, this is great. They started to feel more comfortable, and so did I, as we started to open up the conversations. In that first night, I had to show the relationship between technology and society. To do that, I handed out plastic bags and had them put their cell phones in the plastic bags, and then put the plastic bags in front of them. I talked for about 10 minutes just to distract them. After the 10 minutes, I said, can I ask a question before you use your cell phone? 
how are you feeling? One student said, I missed some phone calls. Another student said, you took away a part of me. The last student said, I cheated. I used a cell phone through the bag, and I sent text messages. I said to them, that's great. You now see the relationship between technology and society. You see that how 20 or 30 years ago, we didn't have technology connected to our belt. But now we do. And it's a big change for what we're doing. It worked. I was able to get through to them. I made them talk. I made them speak. How did I do that? Well, I changed my name. I didn't say, call me Professor Ecker. Call me Dave. Why should I be any different than them? I said to them, look, I'm going to talk slower. And I enunciated my words better. I also made the class interactive. I gave them activities. I gave them discussions. And I made them be involved. That's really vital for second language learners. For the third class, I discussed ethics and the relationship between technology and society. I used the example of the Terry Schiavo case that happened in 2005 in the US, where a woman got di went into a coma, and she was being kept alive by a feeding tube. The doctors diagnosed her in a vegetative state. Her husband went to the Florida courts to get the feeding tube removed. And he got the approval to get the feeding tube removed. But her parents objected and went to appeal to the US president, George Bush at the time, who signed an executive order to keep her alive and not remove the feeding tube. I said to them, this is a perfect case of an ethical dilemma that you have. And I asked them, if this was your mother, what would you do? I did a poll on the board, but they were in deep thought. You could tell they were trying to figure out what was going on and how this related. I know if it was me and my mom, I would have a difficult time with it. Wouldn't you guys? This class forever changed me. It changed my attitude towards teaching. It changed the way I look at teaching at all. I experienced life, I changed, this experience changed my life for the better. It really made me a better person. We never want to get close to our students, but why not? The students took me out for snacks, I went out to a night market, which is like a flea market with them. It was fantastic. They got to show me their way of living. Why don't we want to get close? I hit the curveball out of the park that night. I thought it was fantastic. I love Taiwan. I love these students. They helped me so much that it was an enriching experience that in future trips, I brought my wife and son so they can experience the culture. These are some of the students. Patty, Tiffany, and Doug, they helped me to get back and forth from the class to <clears throat> and campus. These are some of the other students. One of the things they do in their culture is they believe in gifts. They gave me a gift to say thank you for coming. And this is a picture of them doing that, which was fantastic. This was a life-changing experience for me. <clears throat> and as I continued on life's journey, I continue to take these lessons t home today. One of my closest friends, her father's from Italy, and he has a very heavy accent. And most people don't find the time to speak to him and don't think it's worthwhile. I spend the time to talk to him. I get some words, I don't get others. But I really find by encouraging him, he really tries to talk and he really is able to get across. I've learned all kinds of things about Italy, places to eat, and different food. About a year ago, he knew he was going to come and see me. So he brought special figs for me to try. Anybody know anything about me is, I don't like to try new food. It's one of those things I don't do. But how do I say no to this man when he brought this? I tried the fig. It wasn't so good. But I loved how it made him feel and the connection we had and we continue to have to this day. If you have a chance to spend time with somebody, and give them that extra roll, it's worth it. You'll never forget that curveball you hit out of the park. My life lesson is that I taught the students to speak, and they taught me to listen. Thank you.